Today we're going to be covering Facebook and why it's valuable to you and the double-edged sword that Facebook is. So, uh, quick show of hands, how many of you currently have a Facebook account? Okay. How many of you currently have a business Facebook account? All right, so we'll talk briefly about creating the business account because that's what we want. We can easily create a personal account and then when we want to create one for our business, oftentimes people make the mistake of creating an account and it's still the personal one instead of the business one. And technically, Facebook wants you to create a, a business page if you've got a business, not use a personal one. Uh, because the personal is for people and the business is for business, of course. So here's what we'll do. Let's go ahead and go to Facebook.com. and sign in, sign in to your Facebook. So sign into your Facebook. What you get by default is your personal content, your personal account. I see on the top right corner, there's my name. It's my personal one. I've got this personal profile. What I want to do is either manage or create pages. And so that's the big idea with Facebook, that you have personal profiles and business pages. We used to call them fan pages or like pages. And here's how you can tell if you did it right. If your business on Facebook has friends, you did it wrong. You need to have likes. Friends are for people, for a personal profile. Likes are for businesses. So if you still have friends instead of likes, you did it wrong, but it can be changed. It can be upgraded to the correct type of account. Notice on my account, on everyone's account, on the top right corner, you've got a little black triangle. I'm sure it's got an official name. I don't know what it is. With that little black triangle at the top right, if you click on it, on my, in my case, for example, it says your pages. These are the pages of various clients uh, that I'm involved with. I, or other people on the team, manage the Facebook page. If you don't have anything there under your pages, that means you haven't created one yet. And we'll go through the process of creating one because we can create as many pages as we want. And maybe to learn how it all works, it's a good idea to start over. So you can choose either to use an existing page or create a new one. From this triangle, you see create page and manage pages. I'm going ahead and create a page. If you've got a page and you want to use it, go ahead and select it and we'll use it. But I'm going to create a page first. Under create a page it then asks what kind of business do you have. You can select any one of these. Um, you would want to select local business if you have a physical location. This way you can get people, you can give people driving directions to your business. If you don't have a physical location, you can choose the second option, which is company or organization. Let's say I, I, I don't have a real storefront, but I ship stuff throughout the US, so I might choose company. You can create brand or product. You can create a Facebook page specifically for a specific product. This is what Coca-Cola does. They've got their whole Coca-Cola huge Facebook page, and then they create a Facebook page just for Coke Zero, and just for Diet Coke, and just for Coke Green, and whatever. You can do artist, band, public figure, entertainment, cause, or community. These can be changed, but the one that makes sense for you, you should select. And again, the big difference between the first two is that local business is for a place that exists that people can go to. I'll select the second one, company. 
asks to choose a category. You've got lots to choose from. Uh, I'll do again as usual, Victor's Bakery, so I need to find food and beverages. And then type the name of your business. This is not the web address, uh, the URL yet. That's going to be on another screen. This is your name on Facebook, so if people search your name, they can find you. Or if they're searching keywords and those keywords are in your name, they could possibly find you as well. The page terms are right there, and basically these are the things that no one reads but everyone agrees to. And again, it's that you're not going to use Facebook uh, for nefarious purposes. You're going to follow the rules, not post uh, like nudity and stuff like that. Uh, so you can read it if you'd like, but let's click Get Started. Depending on which of the ones you chose out of the six possible, you may have more or less of these setup screens. I've got About, Profile, Favorites, Preferred, Audience. If you have more or less of them, let me know. Uh, but it just depends on which of the first six you selected. <coughs> In my particular case, jumping down a bit, I have a spot right here to claim a Facebook name. You may or may not see that. There doesn't quite seem to be a reason why you may or may not see it, although for a long time people were saying, and Facebook was saying, you cannot claim your Facebook unique name unless you have 30 likes. And that has existed. I've also sometimes seen it as 25 likes, and sometimes I've seen it as no particular requirement. In mine, it's letting me choose an address right away. Yours, it might. It might not. I don't know. Uh, I remember we, there was like certain like marketing options that were available only after like 100 likes, right? Marketing options? Mm, maybe. Specifically like, like what? Like who can you target to? It, like, you know, it lets you like promote a post right away. It lets you like, you know, do certain things. But there were certain things that it was like, well, well, if we can, uh, if we can look into that, that might be useful. But now, that kind of doesn't matter as much because the value now is the promoted content, which you can do right away. So here under the address, you can choose an address, but be careful here, because if you are creating an account just like me, mine is another fake test account. I'm going to delete it eventually. If you are doing this like me and creating a brand new account, you need to a brand new Facebook business page, you need to decide are you just doing this to learn this or are you doing it for real to keep the page? If you're just doing it for fun to figure this out, you may not want to choose a name and take it away from yourself. So I won't fill anything on the Facebook name. And you probably don't want to just yet. There's a spot then for a description of 155 characters. Tell people what your page is about, it says. So here I'd write a 155 characters, a biography. I can use the same thing that I've written over for Twitter and Google+. I can keep it all consistent if, I, if you'd like. Or you can change it up a little bit, thinking in terms about these are the people on Facebook, what might they be interested most in, but you might not know that for starting off. So I'm going to do the usual here. San Diego Bakery in East Lake, California. We specialize in um, healthy versions of your favorite treats. So I would fill in as much as possible to the limit. 155 characters, what your business is, because here is another way that you could get found when you're on, when someone's on Facebook, they're typing in these keywords, these phrases, and if those are in my description and other parts of my page, I might get found. There's a box for website, so you can put in here your, your website, pictures, bakery.com. 
I could think outside the box and have this linked directly to some sort of landing page, meaning a page on your site that you've created on your site in WordPress, let's say, uh, that you can only get to in a specific way. You can only get to fb.html on my site if you come from Facebook. That's a landing page. You're getting to that page, you're landing on to that page via this route. You could do that. It's also saying what you could put into this box is uh, an Instagram address or a Twitter address or other social media. So let's say you also want to promote something else. So I can I can put uh, twitter.com slash Victor's Bakery. Whatever you'd like. I'm going to save that info and it'll take me to step two where it wants a, uh, a logo or else it will be the generic white flag. And isn't it interesting that they use the white flag as the, as the logo because of its connotations. And so here you can uh, add a logo and you should add a logo as soon as possible, your company logo. You don't want to be yet another uh, generic uh, right out of the box type of account. You want to be fully set up with your logo, your branding, all of that so you can get liked, so you can get followed. Uh, so I would change that as soon as possible. I don't have my logo, so I'll do it later. You can upload it, you can try to import it. For the moment, I'll have to skip it. You've got Add to Favorites, which is pretty worthless. Uh, what this is supposed to be is that every time you log in to Facebook, it'll take you to your personal profile. And if you want to get any work done on your business page, you have to switch to it. Here, Facebook is saying, put your page in your favorites so that you see your business page very easily, very quickly. And I had a bad experience with this before. I don't know if they fixed it, but the problem has been that it could be easy to accidentally use your business page as a person rather than as the business. What I mean by that is I, it has happened to me that I'm posting something to one of my clients' business pages and whoops, I did it as Victor, not as the business and vice versa. I might have posted something on my personal one when I was still logged into the business and suddenly that business posted on Victor's page. And I found, in my experience, that the way that I did that accidentally was by putting my company into the favorites here, clicking on it, and then it didn't switch me to the business. It simply showed me my page. So they might have fixed that, but I was burned once, and that's enough, and I don't trust it. So I'm not going to bother with putting anything here. I'll show you the other way that I would do it to switch back and forth between accounts. So I'm just going to skip this. I don't think it has much value. They might have fixed it. I don't know. I'm not going to chance it. Skip. And then this is very cool here. If you created your business page like a year ago, year and a half or something, it didn't have this. Uh, the more modern incarnations of these pages have this, but this is a preferred page audience. Tell us about the people you'd most like to connect with. Anyone can find your page, but we'll do our best to put it in front of people who matter to you the most. The thing about Facebook that makes it a double-edged sword is, you know, the good thing is there's so many people on Facebook. The bad thing is there's so many people on Facebook. So you're gonna have a hard time getting found on Facebook, perhaps. With 1.6 billion people, it might be hard to get found. So Facebook here is trying to do something helpful. It will try to show your page to the people that really care about your product or your business or your service. And so we should take advantage of this and customize it pretty well. And this will help our page get found. And we can do this on a post-by-post -post basis also when we get to that. So here it says locations. Everyone in this location, people who live in this location, recently were in this location and traveling in this location. 
So here I could do everyone in this location, include or exclude. Let's say you've got a product that you can't sell in a certain area, you know, alcohol, and you can't sell in certain areas or countries. So you can exclude those areas, and your product, your, your Facebook page, will not be shown there. Maybe I'm trying to target a specific location. I'm trying to target Chula Vista. As I start uh, typing Chula Vista, I can select Chula Vista, California. And so what happens there is that this page will be focused a little bit more to the people in this area within 25 miles. And um, I can make that expand or contract. And I can add more. I can say, I want to target the people in Chula Vista and Escondido. So now it'll look like that. I'm reaching people in Oceanside, near Camp Pendleton, San Diego, down to Tijuana, and overlap. So I can add multiple locations that I'm targeting. I can also, let me remove these. If you hover over them, then you can get the X to remove it. You can also add zip codes. So let's say I want to focus on 91914. So I'm going to target this area here, East Lake. Is there a way to do that if you're already on the page? There is. In a little while, once I get past this, I'll show us where we can get to this if we've already got a page. And so what I've done here is I've targeted a zip code. I can do that. I can also simply drop a pin and say I want to target this area here within you know, one mile. And I want my page to try to be shown to people most directly within one mile of this spot here. This is really smart because you can also, instead of everyone in this location, and you can only choose one of these at a time. But if I do everyone in this location, what about if I do people who live in this location? Everyone in this location means anyone who is in the area, who lives in the area, who has most recently been here. People give away so much information on Facebook and all these networks. They know where you're at. Uh, so these networks know where you're at, where you've been, what you're doing, and all of that. And as a person, that might be terrifying. That might be such an intrusion of privacy. But as a business, it's great because this is marketing. This is targeted marketing. This is what the old school advertisers and marketers would kill for, to know this product is really going to be focused with these people that really care about it. Facebook and all these networks have built that when we check in to a location when we write something, when we share something, we're telling Facebook, this is what I like, this is what I don't like. Facebook has a huge database on everyone that uses Facebook, and we can take advantage of it like this. So for example, I can do uh, people traveling in this location. The thing about this is that um, someone lives in Boston, and they came to San Diego, and they're on their Facebook, and they're telling everyone, hey, I'm in San Diego, I love it. Facebook knows that. Facebook knows that they don't live in Boston, that they're visiting San Diego. So we can target that because I might be a sort of a business or a, or a brand that is going to focus on out-of-towners. So if I select that and tell it San Diego, anyone who doesn't live in San Diego but has been here recently could see the content of my page. I'll keep it simple for the moment. And just say San Diego. Am I targeting a specific age? Because I can target from 13 to 65 and up. You have to be at least 13 years old to use Facebook. So if you've got little cousins that are 10 years old on Facebook, I'm going to tell on you because you shouldn't be that young on Facebook. And so if I'm targeting a specific age, I'm going to target 20 to 30 year olds, my content on Facebook will be targeted more toward that age range. Men or women or all, depending on your, on your company 
uh, product, of course. Interest. This is super valuable right here. Um, I can start typing something or I can look at browse. I'm going to look at browse first. So this is, has all of these topics. And if I put my mouse over, for example, business and industry, it says 1.1 billion people have expressed some interest in a business and industry related topics. I've got this bakery, so mine is, let's say, food and drink. 1.16 billion people have expressed some interest in forms of food and drink. So that's potentially amount of people that I could reach of all of Facebook, not just here on in San Diego. If I click the triangle next to a category, it further says, okay, alcoholic beverages, regular beverages, cooking, food, cuisine, etc. Well, let's see if I go look at food. We've got barbecue, chocolate, etc. Desserts. I found desserts. 260 million people who have expressed an interest in or like pages related to desserts. That's what my business is about. I will choose that. And as you start to select um, items, it'll give you suggestions. Okay, you chose dessert. Maybe you also might like cakes, cupcakes, pastries, etc. Recipes. Yeah, I'll select recipes. So I'm choosing about four or five interests so that my page hopefully shows up for the people that are interested in that. Uh, language, do I want to target people of a specific language? Let's say English UK, English All, English US, maybe Spanish also. Maybe Tagalog. Um, Filipino. So I'm targeting different uh, groups. That's the great thing about Facebook. We can get very specific. I will click Save on that. My page is created. It may pop up to give me um, it may pop pop up to give me tips and such. I'll just close those tips. And so you see that screen when you create a brand new page. If you've already got a page, in order for you to see these things, you can get to them right here. I've got my page, and at the top right, I will see settings. If you click settings at the top right, that will give you a lot of settings to look at. And they have a, let's see, general page info. Oh, actually, they, they moved it. If you're there under settings, and you click on page info, you'll see briefly that it that page has moved and it takes you over to the About tab. Here's where you can select your category again. Where you can set um, a variety of options. Oh no, sorry, it is there. Uh, so many settings. Okay, it's back on settings, and then it's under here on the left, preferred page audience. So over here on Facebook, what we can do is um, there's a couple of settings that I would recommend that we look at because the defaults on, uh, on Facebook, uh, they work all right, but one of the defaults of Facebook is that anyone can post anything on your page, meaning your customers can post anything on your page, which may be good. 
That's part of the dialogue of social media. However, if any of your customers can do that, that means any crazy person can write any crazy thing on your Facebook. So there's a couple of settings to help protect against that. What if your customers are crazy? How about if you're what? Your customers are crazy. Why is it hard? I would still do what I'm about to do because you want only the craziest comments no, to be crazy. visible. So what I'm going to do here is if we go back to the settings menu, we will see under general a lot of settings here. But notice the third option here. We've got favorites, page visibility, visitor posts. It says anyone can publish to the page. Anyone can add photos and video. If you click edit, you can change it to be disable posts by other people. If you activate that, then no one can post anything on your page except yourself. You may want that, but I discourage it because I always teach social media in the form of a dialogue, meaning back and forth. I write something, my fans can write something, it's a dialogue. I believe that's a stronger online presence than the monologue, which is that you're going to write something on your Facebook page and no one else can reply to it. I would keep it on allow visitors, but I would activate the second check mark here, review posts by other people before they are published to the page. That's how you can keep the bad comments out, the spam, the off-topic stuff. This is how you can control your message better. This is like, uh, like Google+. Plus. Uh, you can control your message better. It's in contrast to Twitter, that any crazy person can write any crazy thing and, it, and your hashtag could get co-opted and it gets away from you. On Facebook and Google Plus and such, you can guide the message, keep it on task. For example, I, um, I, I logged in the other day and I saw a, a message waiting for me to, to, to moderate that said, how could you support that person online? I don't like that person, and how could you do it? It's like, well, who cares? And I deleted that, I deleted that, uh, that post. It has nothing to do, really. It was their own personal opinion. It had nothing to do with the topic of the, of the site. So it was moderated. It never showed up, and then I deleted it. I want to keep things um, on topic. It's my site. It's my property, so I'm happy to do that. I'll select that, Review Posts, and I'll click Save Changes. There's a lot of other settings here you can look on your own. Do you want to activate a, a profanity filter? Do you want to um, uh, allow messages, yes or no, and such? All the defaults are pretty good. If you'd like to change any of them, you can. And notice on this screen you've got at the very bottom remove page. Uh, after we see this, and if this is just a test account, you can delete it, and not a problem. You've also got merge pages there. If you've made more than one business page throughout the years, you want to merge them together so that it's one entity on Facebook, not multiple ones fighting for each other. On a different screen somewhere else, we find the part about, about uh, updating your personal one to a business page if you did that wrong. What I would do here on this page is active on this screen is activate one more thing. It says News Feed Audience and Visibility for Posts. Right now, our whole site, our whole Facebook page, is targeted to that audience that we set up previously. But if we want to target a post by post method, we have to activate this. It says the ability here is turned off. So if you want to edit that, I would recommend turn this on. When you create a post, you can choose which people see it by selecting your audience's interest and such. You can have the control of who sees it and all of that good stuff. So I would suggest turn that one on just for more control. Hmm. 
Uh, is, it a, is it an account that's already existed or is it a new one you just created? It might be for various reasons. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll look into it. But if you don't have this, we still have a version of it that we can do in a different way later. So besides this, there's a lot of other settings that you can look at. But again, they're all they're, they all should be good. I'll look at one more setting on the left, page roles. Right now, because I created this page, I'm the only one I can that can do any administrative tasks. Add posts, delete posts, moderate things. But if I want more people to help me on my Facebook page, this is where I do it. I go to page roles, I type in their name or email, and they need to have a Facebook page in order for us for them to manage it. If I'm typing someone else here, John Smith. Would I like to add them as an editor, admin, moderator, etc.? It'll tell you an editor can do a lot of things, an admin can do even more things, an analyst can do very few things. So it goes from weakest role to strongest role, and I caution you about putting other people as an admin because they can manage all aspects of the page, including sending messages, etc., viewing insights, and assigning more page roles. An admin can add more people to this Facebook. Worst case scenario is that you added one of your employees to this Facebook page as an admin, and they add a bunch of other people. Or, worser case scenario, worstest case scenario, is that they remove you from your own page. Because if they're an admin, they can kick you out. You know, it's funny, I've, I've been added as an admin to people's pages. Yeah. And it's funny, because I've helped them with like running their marketing. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, they've owed me money, they've done me dirty, and I have access to the thing, and I'm like, I'm not going to do anything, but I really wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Nowadays, Facebook automatically puts people as an editor, maybe because of that issue, but you do have that leverage. You you would use it. You should use it. I'm not saying, of course, do the bad thing, but I'm I saying... Wonder, hey, you still owe me money from the last month. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right, right. Don't do this to this guy. <laughs> I see that sometimes people do that when they design a website and they put it in the code. People write code comments and they say, you know, beware, this person stiffed me, or they're going to cheat you, or whatever. I've heard about that. I haven't seen it, but I've definitely heard about that. Because web developers have a tendency to like, view shorts, and then they'll see it on the comments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a... Uh, let's see if I can find it very quickly, because it's, it's pretty funny. Right there, if you look at the Mozilla code, <laughs> they've got their little Mozilla logo hidden in the code. That's funny. So it's, a, it's right here on the Mozilla homepage, view code, and they've got their logo right there. It says, hey there, nice to meet you. Interested in having a direct impact on hundreds of millions of users? So yeah, developers are always kind of poking around in the background of things when they have the control. So here, if you're going to add any, any extra helpers, make sure you choose the right role, and probably you'll want editor. One thing that I'll touch on a little bit is something relatively new. If you didn't know, Facebook owns Instagram. Facebook bought Instagram a few years ago for about a billion dollars. Literally, a billion dollars. Yeah, they had plenty to spare. And so I was using Instagram since week one. So yes, I can, I can pull a hipster card there and say I was on Instagram before you. I heard of Instagram before you. And I was there since week one. Oh, uh, that was 2011, probably. Uh, and, and I remember I was in this room, in that computer in the back right there when I set up, maybe that one or that one over there, I set up my Instagram in this room in 2011 when I was Miss Lopez's assistant, because I'm always on the lookout for new technology. And I said, what's this Instagram thing? Let me get it. And so I've used Instagram for a while. And I bring this up because in the beginning, Instagram was a small, independent company. and they became so valuable pretty quickly that Facebook bought them. And I remember when that happened, everyone was gnashing their teeth and saying, Facebook is going to ruin Instagram. And I remember the, 
uh, hashtag was RIP Instagram. Um, amazingly, Facebook pretty much left them alone. They didn't really do anything to change Instagram until very recently, within the last year or so, which is the ability for you now to add ads on Instagram. Instagram used to be a wonderful ad-free zone, and now they have ads. Well, that could be bad for people, but it's great for businesses in that we can create Instagram ads. And technically, all you have to do is add posts here in the Instagram ads section and go through this process and what will happen is you will put ads of your business on Instagram. Uh, ads is the keyword is the is the secret word for paying for this. You're not going to put ads on Instagram for free. You do have to set up budgets and credit cards and all of that and your ads will go on Instagram, but that will help you reach more people because Instagram is a very, very popular network uh, with a lot of users. So we're not going to do it very deeply. I'm just showing you here. You can explore Instagram ads. Uh, any questions on any of these things we've looked at so far? Can you run your run or manage your Instagram ads to the Facebook platform? Wow. Like if that's not integrated in any way, you know, like double click and, and Google AdWords. I don't know. You know how they sometimes merge things. Yes, but that's a problem with AdWords and all of that. In that. Uh, they're competing networks, so they may not fully work as you might want. No, I'm talking about like you know how Google bought double click, and then how slowly but surely they you know what I mean? like, yes. have Facebook and Instagram marketing platforms, and you know it's just to manage them. Are are they integrating in any way? The closest is that you do all of that through Facebook. Whatever you're going to do uh, via ads and marketing. On Instagram, and you're going to do it through the Facebook page. Oh, so page. you do manage your Instagram, because I've never done any in Instagram ads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do that for a few clients, and it's all done here through Facebook. Okay. You don't you don't see that. You don't manage it on Instagram itself. You manage it on the Facebook, on the Facebook. On uh, your business page. Yes. And so the demographic, because it's not like the same audience. Exactly, it could be a very different audience. So the thing about any of these ad platforms is, again, we've given away so much information, purposely or not, that we can target an audience. We can go over on Twitter ads and target our tweets to be seen by the most efficient group of people, for the most bang for our buck. We can do that for Instagram too. Maybe the people that follow us on Facebook are an older demographic, but those that follow us on Instagram are younger. So we can create these Facebook ads, I'm sorry, these Instagram ads, to target those people more directly. So all the ad management is on Instagram. I thought it was just like a tool. Yeah, it's all integrated here. All right, so these are various settings. I'm going to go back to page. Notice we have page, messages, notifications, publishing tools. Once you've got this account set up and start to get traffic and likes and such, you'll have an extra panel called Insights. And Insights is their way of showing you what's effective, what's working, what's not working. I'll show an example of that in a moment. But because this page is pretty new, it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have Insights. Yes, page where you can go back to the home page here to see what you've posted. Messages is the screen where you can have private messages between your customers back and forth. Notifications, you'll see who's liked your page, who's replied, who's done sharing and such. And on this screen, there's other screens, but on this screen you can also see here perhaps I would like to share this page with my connections, with my friends. I could tell, hey friends, why not like my new page? I wouldn't worry too much about that though because you're not really going to build your business very well on the backs of your friends. If you're connected on Facebook and they've been using Facebook for a while, perhaps they're getting numb, 
to all of the notifications and the requests and oh my my Farmville chickens are hungry and all of that so people are getting perhaps numb to this stuff so by you saying hey Bobby like this page Melanie Patricia Gabriel like this page they might just ignore it they might mute it so I wouldn't worry too much about uh, suggesting your friends some of my colleagues in the company say you should get your friends involved in this but I personally say don't worry about it because you're not going to build your business on the backs of your friends probably how many times are you going to sell them again your product again your service again what you do We've got publishing tools this will give you a list of everything that you've published scheduled and so forth if I go back to page If I go back to page, and then we've got share. We've got this usual stuff. Everyone's got some experience, but briefly I'll say under status, you can write text. If you copy and paste a link, it will make a nice little preview of your link. So let's say... Let's say I add a link... To my post, it'll go look on the page, make a thumbnail, and so that could be something to do. So you can add text, you can add a link, you can add photos and video. Create photo albums, slideshows. If you upload three to seven photos, it'll create a video for you. We have events and milestones, and depending on various factors, you might also have here uh, offers. This page doesn't have it, but I've seen some that have offers. And in that is for you to create posts that entice people with an offer. Those are free. They need a, a bit of setup, but with an offer, you are able to offer something to your Facebook followers. So I can do event. Again, that needs some setup, but what if I've got something going on some day of the week? I can create an event, share it, get traffic there. So instead of just another boring status or photo update, I can do an event. I can do a milestone, which is just a, a pat on the back celebratory thing what did you accomplish when was it description picture it's just another way to share something different note this is one of the new ones under note this is basically writing a blog post Facebook is trying to add blog posts now so you can add a top graphic title description as you write something you can then do some formatting like bold, so like a full featured sort of um, like a full featured blog platform like WordPress. So they call it a note, but it's a blog post. different ways, different kinds of content to share. So what I said earlier about accidentally posting as the wrong entity, notice I'm about to post something and at the top right corner it says I'm posting as Victor's Bakery, the business. I can post as some other entity. So be careful, make sure that the account that's supposed to be posting here 
is posting. You'll see the icon there and at the left. If it's your picture, right, your personal picture, like that, Victor is about to post onto this business, not the business. And Do you once have any kind of solution for the mobile end of it to post on behalf of let's say, a page or a client of it? You should use the Facebook Pages app oh. rather than the Facebook app. The Facebook app is for personal with the flag. So use the Facebook Pages app on mobile to make sure you're posting as a business to the business. If you're not on that one, you're most likely going to post as a person to the business. So make sure you. Use anything like Buffer or Hootsuite or anything else like that? I do recommend those things, those specific ones you said. But personally, myself, I don't really use them that much. I like to do it the manual way, the hard way that I'm doing every single page myself. I kind of like that. It's obviously more work. Um, not that I get paid extra, but uh, I, I kind of like doing it that way because I, I like to craft my message more specifically yeah. that way. Whereas these management platforms, they are very convenient, but they you share kind of the same thing over and over to all the networks. So as I'm going to write something, I have some options. I can, again, attach a photo, and I can attach, an, uh, like, what am I doing or what am I feeling? So, you know, celebrating his birthday. You can do all of that stuff also for a business, if it makes sense. I can check in. That's adding a location. I'm at Southwestern College when I posted this. I'm at my business when I posted this. The point of that is then someone sees it, especially on their mobile device, and they see that you did this at that location, they will get a map. So then you can see where the physical location is at and maybe drive traffic there because of the location attached. Set date and time. If I want to um, change the, this is sort of like uh, predating it. This is more for attaching a date onto a post of the past. Um, and uh, Really, the big thing about this is, for example, the there's just a time attached here in, in the idea like, I wanted to put an anniversary post, uh, but I was so busy. It's, this is our five-year anniversary, uh, but I was so busy on that day I forgot to post it. So I can attach a date after the fact. I don't think there's much value to that, but if you want to build community, build uh, nostalgia and such, you can attach a date. Then we've got the little bullseye, which is the target, which is that you will narrow your post. These, This is like that other screen about interests and audience and location and all of that. Uh, who do I want to um, better reach with this post under targeting. That could be very useful because if you don't target, you might not reach the right audience. There's just so many people on Facebook. So it is valuable to add targeting to your to your posts. I'll talk about boost post a little later. Then we've got uh, make this public or limit the audience. Usually you want it public. And then if you hit publish, it goes. But I'm not going to publish just yet because we also have schedule, backdate, and draft. Maybe I'm going to write something complex, so I'll draft it and come back to it. All of your drafted posts are found under the publishing tools. At the top, we've got page, message, notifications, publishing tools. 
If you save a draft, it's up there. Backdraft is related to that date, but this this will uh, this is more effective. There must be some little nuance of it. I usually don't do the date here. I usually do the backdraft back date. If I need to add a post that was supposedly published three days ago, I can do it this way. So if you forgot if you got forgot to publish something on a certain day, you can backdate it. And the opposite of that is schedule it. If I select schedule, I will say this post I want it to public to be published tomorrow at 9 a.m. And it'll do it. This is how you can set up a series of Facebook posts without being chained to your computer. Maybe spend one day, spend your Monday uh, and schedule uh, your post for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That way you don't have to be at your computer on Friday to post this. You can forward post this pretty far, I think. Let's see. No, I'm going out. That's too far there, but it went all the way to. I can put it up to this. I can put it up to November 1st. Up to six months away. I would be careful about uh, also scheduling because there have been social media fails in that some marketing company set up a whole bunch of posts for a specific company and they you know they let it run automatically and what happened was something in the real world happens some sort of tragedy or some weird thing happens in the real world and suddenly their post is very in poor taste that happened when there was the shooting in Aurora Colorado the movie theater shooting some i forget who it was but some company on Facebook uh, published something that had uh, had auto publish scheduled publishing on the day of the shooting and their post seemed very insensitive in light of today's events. Well, they had scheduled that weeks before. They didn't think about that that tragedy could have happened, so it kind of came back and bit them. You never know that this will happen. I wouldn't quite worry about it, but think about it. So I can set a publication date. And this is very cool here. They've added this recently, distribution schedule. Uh, it has happened so many times in the past that a company puts out a, a post on Facebook that says, Sale this Saturday. Use this coupon. And so people claim it that weekend. Then a month passes. The post is still there. If someone digs back far enough in your timeline, they will find that post again. So someone's going to dig back, perhaps on purpose or accident, and find your Sale this Saturday. Use this coupon. A month later, they're going to try to claim it, and they're going to say, I'm trying to use this coupon. Your system won't let me. You say, but sir, that coupon expired a month ago. And they'll say, why is it still on your Facebook? So Facebook added this cool feature here. Stop the news feed distribution after a certain time. Set this up so that this, is, this lasts one week and then goes away. Yeah, you need definitely a good amount of time for that. So let's say I'm doing this for about one week. This offer is going to be on Facebook for one week, then it deactivates itself. It doesn't delete itself, it just deactivates itself and it goes into your publishing tools screen. This is so useful because especially for time-sensitive posts, you don't want this to be hanging around all of this time and causing people problems. So those are all of these nuances of posting. I'll just obviously post some gibberish for the moment to show you that um, I'll publish something else. Publish something, it goes, okay, all my zero followers see it. Um, so here's the thing. In the old days, your followers, 
were likes. That's why companies wanted to get likes on Facebook. A like was basically like an approval that says, I like your page, I want to see your stuff, I want to see your posts. Facebook changed that algorithm that no longer when someone follows you, your stuff might show up on their, t on their home screen, on their timeline. Uh, pretty annoying. They're changing the rules, and they can, and they do, and they will, and they'll keep changing it, and people keep getting annoyed, and, ke and people keep saying, I'm leaving Facebook, and they do, or they don't, and life goes on. And so the, the way to counteract the limited reach of Facebook even though there's 1.6 billion people, you're not going to reach them anymore. Facebook is making, making it actively difficult to find people now, especially if you're a business. But guess what? Facebook has a great way for you to reach more people. It's called Boost Post. I've posted this and I want more people to see this. If I click Boost Post, it'll set up this screen here where I can pay to get my posts visible by more people. So yes, the big secret to using Facebook effectively nowadays is to pay for it, unfortunately. But you can use as little as a budget of one dollar. Even with one dollar you're going to reach dozens of people, maybe even a hundred people. I've got zero likes, zero followers, but if I invest even in one dollar, my post could reach more people. This needs a little bit of setup and a credit card or PayPal account. So I'm going to take a quick look at what this screen looks like. And you can do this two ways. After I've posted, after I've made a post, I can then boost it. Or at the moment that I'm writing it, I can boost it. I prefer personally to add boosting after I've posted it because it's happened to me more than once that I've crafted an amazing post with all of these features. I go to boost, something happens, it crashes, and then I lost everything. Everything that I was writing, what I was about to boost, and I have to start over. So I like to publish what I need to boost. Once it's set in stone, then I go to boost. But what this screen is about then is choosing an audience and a budget. I've got here some audiences that I've created, the blogger audience, well-to-do clients, etc. These are different demographics of people that I'm trying to reach. I'm going to click create a new audience just to show you what that looks like. I'm creating a new audience that I want people to see this, I'm going to call this my foodies audience. I'm going to target a location or a state or a city. Let's say I'm shipping throughout the whole US, so country, United States. I can target more than one. Let's say I also ship to Canada and Mexico. I want people to buy my food here. Obviously 13 year olds have no money so I'm going to put this up. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, 22 year olds up to 60 year olds men and women. Interests, same sort of thing here. I'm going to, this time I'm going to start typing something like uh, food and drink. It might suggest, okay, do you want this? Do you want that? Let's say food and drink, cookies, organic food. So I'm creating an audience. I think these people within this age range and locations have these interests. I'll save that. And so my post here with this budget is going to reach about 1,000 to 3,000 people. I have no followers, but then my post could reach those amount of people. It's suggesting a $20 budget and I can change it here. So obviously if I put in a thousand dollar budget, it's going to reach 40,000 people. How is that going to reach 40,000 people? It's going to show it either on the desktop news feed or their mobile news feed. It's going to put this sponsored post 
on people's desktop or mobile <coughs> news feeds, the ones that I've chosen in this audience. So when you browse Facebook and you see stuff, stuff pop up of companies and stuff, that's what they've done. They've boosted the post. And maybe you yourself just totally ignore it or click hide or whatever. And a lot of people will put it that it's spam or muted or whatever. A lot of people will. They'll say, I don't like that, I don't want to see it. And then um, some people will like it and see it and click and, and do what you want them to do. So um, the efficiency, the efficacy of it depends on your post, your budget, your target. But as I said, you can start with as little as a dollar. Even though it's not on the list, you can write one dollar. And I'm going to reach between 95 and 250 people. Great, much better than the zero I'm reaching right now. Let's say I do put twenty dollars and I want my post, I want Facebook to promote me for one day, seven days, fourteen days. So this is twenty dollars a day? No, in total, it's gonna to take the twenty and divide it into about a dollar forty two a day for fourteen days. In one day, I'll spend all twenty dollars to reach as many people as possible, perhaps up to three thousand people in one day. If I put one dollar and I try to run this for seven days, it'll complain. You need at least seven dollars here to spend one dollar per day. Let's just say I put ten dollars. Ten dollars, let it run for seven days, I'll reach approximately 600 to 1600 people. And this goes by your budget and your audience. So let's say I switch to some of these other audiences, the blogger audience, 440 to 1200, it reached less people. Well to do clients, change a little bit, that audience, fewer than 100. So, depending how you set this up, you can reach more or less people. And it's okay that I'm not reaching. Here it's saying you could possibly reach 86 million people if you put in like a thousand dollars. But I think reaching six to 1600 people is a good amount to start off with. Because really, nowadays with Facebook, it's an uphill battle, it's an uphill climb. And the best way to do that climb is boosting your content, putting ads. And it may sound like, well, that is such a ripoff. That is so against my morals. Sure, but uh, this is the game now. And if you wanna, if you wanna play the game, these are the rules. And modern Facebook is about paying to get more people to see you. And it could be as little as a dollar. And this works because think about it. Do you need to buy that latte again? Do you need to buy a, a new latte? And a latte every day this week. Spend those four dollars, three dollars, whatever, build them up, and you've got their money for you to reach more people and get more business and then buy more lattes. But think about where you can save money here and there to spend it on marketing. You'll need to set up a credit card and such and uh, That's its own process, so I will not boost it, but that would be the process there. That's the big secret about Facebook, really. You can post as much as you want, but it's not going to get you as far as it used to. You can ask your friends and, fa and family for likes, but that's not going to get you that far. You can put that like button or that like sticker on, your, on the front door of your business, and that's not going to get you too far either. Facebook is actively making it difficult to reach an audience unless you pay. One of the re many reasons not to like Facebook. In full disclosure, Facebook is my least favorite social network. I hardly use it. I don't like it. I don't like the business, the people behind it, the philosophy. I don't like Facebook, personally. But for business, I love Facebook because of boosting, because of marketing and advertising to, re to reach the perfect audience. Let me switch over to one of these clients that does have it all set up, and you'll see when you've got it set up completely with traffic, you will get a brand new Insights tab. If we take a quick look at the insights of this client, we will see, for example, um, 
reach. Under reach is how many people are you are you re are you is your content reaching to? It shows you here dark orange, light orange. Light orange is organic in that you're not paying for for the reach to find people. And on a good day, we, we're reaching about 900 people organically. Paying for it reaches 4,800 people. Notice how high up here. 19,000 people were reached. Usually, we're doing budgets for this client between $30 and $50 every couple of weeks. So nowadays, to be competitive on Facebook, you do need to really think about paying for reach. It doesn't have to be these sorts of levels. One dollar, five dollars, ten dollars once a month. You can scrounge five dollars for one month. You can probably scrounge around twenty dollars. You'll just have to get over the hump of thinking, I'm gonna pay for this thing. Cheaper than that. It is. Yeah. Much cheaper. Yeah. I was gonna say, uh, in that class that I took, which we just finished like a week ago, mm -hmm. um, there was a guy who was like a what do you call it? A travel agent guy. Mm -hmm. And throughout the, and we were in this course for eight months, and the whole time he was just like fighting it, right? Mm -hmm. so it was like kind of like that, against my morals and all, and you know, blah, blah. And I kept telling him, dude, you need to spend some money, like in between breaks and stuff. I'm like, just do it. Facebook, if you're, you can find it like crazy. That's the one where you should, based on what he needed, right? And they finally did like five bucks or whatever, and he's like, oh my god, yeah, he was all into it. I mean, especially for him, if he closes one deal. It's some good chatter, yeah. you know? And it's all commission stuff, too, in the sense that he doesn't necessarily have this crazy overhead. Like, it costs him anything. He's simply reselling, yeah. like, cruises. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it's funny how it took him a while, and I'm sure now he's kicking, kicking himself. Mm -hmm. Matt should have been doing it the whole time. Hindsight is always twenty twenty, but yeah, this is always even like when we when my company gets when my company talks with potential customers, and they're like, "How we want SEO? What do we do?" And all of that, we we tell them a variety of things, and then we also tell them, you know, are you concentrating on Facebook and doing Facebook ads? And we're like, "We're on Facebook. We don't do ads." Uh, and we're saying, "Well, ads are valuable in all of these networks and very valuable in Facebook." And they are also oftentimes resistant. They think, well, Facebook, that's the thing where I share my, my cat pictures with my friends and family, and I've got to pay for it now. And there's all these scare tactics that happen every few years. Facebook is going to start charging you now. Well, guess what? They started to charge you a long time ago if you were a business. So uh, take advantage of it. And it could be a really small budget, and it'll have some result. This, of course, the farthest it goes is that your posts will reach more people. In here, in theory, it reached 20,000 people. Does that mean that that client suddenly made $20,000 more? No. That just means that this post reached 20,000 potential customers. Even if, it, even if you take 1% of those potential customers, that is still a lot of people. So 19,000, I don't know, 1,500. 1% uh, of that is 191. is. I'd love to have 191 new customers or sales. Out of 20,000 reach, 191, 200 uh, sales? That's amazing. I just think that people need to realize that, I mean, it's not that new. Like, for radio, we've had for years, or TV. Yeah. Well, TV used to be free. But you know what I mean? It's like you have these free services where either ears or eyeballs are at. Someone's got to pay for it. Yeah, it's all about marketing. That's what social media is. It's it's marketing 2.0. It's not a radio ad. It's not a TV ad or a newspaper ad. It's a Twitter ad. It's a Facebook ad. It's an Instagram ad. It's just that we've had these years now. You know, if we, uh, if we think back, like 2000. Uh, uh, when did MySpace come out? Like 2001, 2002? We've had these social networks for a while, and people have grown up thinking about them in a certain way. It's a fun, frivolous, personal thing. To then shift your mind to this is a business tool. That's what's going to need to be done, and those clients that are convinced of this are the ones that are going to succeed. So that's the big lecture, the big idea of Facebook. You need a business page. You need um, 
content as always again I can't tell you what you're going to share on Facebook but whatever you're going to share here you're gonna think about boosting you're not going to need to do this for the assignment of course you're just gonna to need to share create the account share stuff and you need to send me the link to your e uh, to your Facebook you can see it at the top because I did not choose a custom name it's giving me this gibberish name whatever your address is up there you'll need to send that to me and then of course check blackboard for the full requirements of the assignment but you will not need to boost posts for the homework I'll load up the homework in just a moment but any questions about uh, Facebook at this point I'm going to go ahead and open uh, Blackboard. Let's go to Blackboard. We'll take a quick look at the homework. If we look at the homework for this week, on Facebook, uh, a little background info, there's another uh, video that you can watch there, but basically what we talked about is all you need. If you'd like to get another perspective on what we talked about, there's another one there. You want to complete your profile, adding your logo and bio and all of that. Uh, send me an email with the URL to your Facebook. And then what you need to do is, uh, so that I know that your company also exists, you need to follow the link there to go my, to my business page and like that page. Then you're going to need to like f at least five more pages on Facebook. The reason for that is just like Twitter. On Twitter, your business page should also follow other Twitter accounts to see what the trends are to see what they're doing, what the competition is up to, to get inspiration. So you're going to follow this and other accounts on Facebook. You're going to add a like. You're going to like another page so you can see their content. Then you're going to need to create at least one status update with a text, with only text, like a quote. And then on a different day, add a photo. On a different day, add a video. And then on another day, create a milestone extra credit add a note if you add a note type of post you'll get 10 percent an extra point the whole thing is worth 10 points due a week from today may 11th 11 p.m that's the facebook assignment no requirements about boosting don't worry about that you just need to create the business page or if you have one already use it send me the link, make sure you've got these requirements, and then you've got the Facebook assignment. So any questions on the assignment? Alright, so we'll have a little bit of lab time, and if you need any help with anything, call me over, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up, and we'll come back next week.